appreciate all of your support in coming to the debate or Q&A, I should say. My name is Casey Glade. I'm a candidate for Lehigh City Council. I've been a resident for 17 years. And the reason why I'm running for city council is because I think we deserve better. Four out of the five of our city council members now have been in city council for more than a decade. Our mayor has been in city, count, in city council or a mayor for over 26 years. That means for the past 10 years, we've had a super majority of people that have been with us in the city government. And we deserve better. I started my becoming interested in this because I started to see some loopholes that the city started using to get through some of the projects and plans that they wanted to get through. And it started to concern me. I'll give you just one quick example. Across the street from me, there's some property that's zoned for half acre lots. The city didn't like that. They wanted high density uh, on that property, and that causes a problem for us. And the city needed to have a loophole to, in order to do that. And so through the general plan update and change, they slipped in there a village overlay. It sounds nice. It sounds cute. Village overlay sounds nice, right? But it allows the city government to come in and change the density to whatever they like, including commercial. So high density with commercial, and that's what they did. And we've been fighting that. And fortunately, this last week, we did have a little victory. But we know that the city will come back again with another plan in the future. And we need to protect that. I want to protect my property just like I want to protect your property. And there are other loopholes that have happened on my same street. And I want to protect them. Number two, do you think our main street and downtown area is healthy and successful? If not, what would you do to change it? Yeah, everybody drives up and down Main Street. We all have challenges getting up and down the street. And if you want to stop at a retail store there, it's pretty challenging. And so finding the parking and finding that uh, accessibility is, is going to be a challenge for a long time. I don't think there's an easy fix of adding more cars and more traffic and more housing right on top of it. You know, it may help a couple of retail outlets here or there, but we're going to have to have the right kind of retail outlets and attract the right kind of people to stay there. And so I think that's going to be a really challenging uh, district to continue to develop and, and prepare and, and, and attract people to. I don't think there's a really easy, easy solution to that, that problem challenge. Um, is more of a scenario or philosophy, but walk us through your thought process of uh, zone change. So a general, a general plan zone change, how do you look at that and what is your walkthrough? Yeah, zoning and land use is one of the biggest uh, responsibilities of the city council. And we can see how they can change and dramatically alter the neighborhood with the blink of an eye. And we've seen that in my neighborhood. And we shouldn't have to rally 100 residents to a city council meeting to defeat a measure that uh, the city created overnight, like I discussed earlier, that city, that village over there that they created. We need to have responsible zoning, and we have a general plan to guide that. And when we go away from the general plan, you, you as a resident and I as a resident have general expectations. We have expectations of what's going to happen around us. We purchase our property. We make investments in the community. We move our families. We establish our lives, and we should have be respected by the city enough to take our consideration, take us into consideration. And too far too often we go to city council meetings, we hear the city council members just, eh, hey, you're irrelevant. We heard that in our meeting from the developers. It's irrelevant what we do here. Well, it's not irrelevant to me. My neighborhood matters to me. My neighbors matter to me. My family matters to me, and it should matter to you too. Similar to zoning, but do you have any creative ideas or thoughts to help with affordable housing? It's tough, tough. Situation. I mean, I would love to live in Park City in a resort community if I if I could afford it, right? And the tough thing that someone's going to have to tell you is not everybody is going to be able to afford to live in Beehive, and that's just a matter of fact. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but sometimes people have to bring bad news to you. But what can we do about affordability in Utah or in Lehigh? Well, we've tried to build thousands and thousands of high density residential homes and it really hasn't helped. I have, within three miles of my home, 10,000 units. Within three miles of my home, and it hasn't helped. So let's just add 10 or 20 or 40,000 more units, maybe that'll help. Well, we, I can't even get out of my neighborhood right now because of the way this planning and zoning has gone in the city. So it's not gonna help us to just continue to build our way and find more housing and more housing. We have to be a little bit smarter about this, and 
we may not be able to house everybody that wants to have a house in the attic, and that's, I'm sorry. So as part of your 60 second, now 90 second closing statement, start with letting us know what you admire, appreciate, or like about the candidate to your left, or to your next candidate. So Jason, Tyler, Tyler, Michelle, so forth. Thank you, I appreciate your words, and, and I also think you have a very kind heart. First time I met you at Bella. But Charlie, I miss, met you for the very first time tonight. I really appreciate your service in the military. Uh, I just exited the military just a year ago or so, so I appreciate your service. Um, I did notice uh, last night you posted online and somebody came at you very heavy handed. And uh, I, I really appreciated your calm and level headed response to that. And that individual ended up deleting his comments and apologizing. And, and, and that's what a, a leader can do and should do in that situation. So I, I applaud that. Well, I'm not a politician, if you haven't figured that out yet. Uh, and I don't think we need a politician in city council. We need common sense in 2023. We've had a lot of nonsense in the past few years. And, and I'm a candidate that's gonna bring common sense. Your values, my values are, are matched. You know, I want a safe place for my kids. I want my land protected, my home protected. I want my neighborhood protected, and so do you. I want fiscal responsibility in the city. We can't be building $22 million city halls to our, our descendants, I just want to our descendants. And, and you know, we need to be careful about how we spend things, and that's what a little Lehigh City Council member should be doing and watching out for. Over the last year, we've bonded for over, uh, uh, over $90 million or $1,000 per person in the city just for two projects, and it's going to get more and more and more, and we have to be careful about that, and I'm concerned about that type of spending. 